Hey, everyone. Welcome to the show. So I have a ton of updates to share about Donald Trump's coup clowns. First, the monumental news that broke on Friday afternoon. One of Donald Trump's defendants in the Georgia case has accepted a plea deal. You guys may have heard Scott Hall. He was an unknown figure, really, until he was named as one of Trump's co-conspirators or co-defendants, I should say. Um, but he's actually a relative of David Bossy. That is a man who is very well connected in the Republican Party, also to Trump. Bossy was once his uh, deputy campaign manager for Trump's campaign, and he was the chairman of the heinous group that brought us the unfettered government corruption via Citizens United. So that's how Scott Hall became enmeshed in this scheme to overturn the election and was subsequently indicted in this massive RICO case. Well, he has also now taken a plea deal for five misdemeanor charges related to conspiracy to commit election interference. And in exchange, he's going to get a sentence of five years of probation and 5,000 in fines, also 200 hours of community service. Um, Hall also agreed to testify against his co-defendants in all of the upcoming hearings and trials. So that is really bad news for Sidney Powell, also Jeffrey Clark, a few others. Um, the reason being that Hall was involved in the breach of the voting equipment. That is something that was allegedly spearheaded by Powell. Um, it was also facilitated by another one of, of his co-defendants, Kathy Latham. So Hall was also in direct contact with former Justice Department attorney Jeffrey Clark, because Clark, remember, he was trying to send out this bogus letter to the various states saying that the DOJ had uncovered voting irregularities. So Hall might know quite a bit, and he could end up being the star witness against Sidney Powell in the upcoming trial. Um, speaking of which, there's another person who was also called to testify, Bernie Carrick. He is a longtime ally of Donald Trump, also of Rudy Giuliani. Well, he is has been subpoenaed to testify in that trial that's coming up. I think it's on the 23rd of this month. And his attorney is now saying, yes, he will show up. He will testify if you grant him immunity. So that just came out before I started recording today. Um, he, his attorney is saying, you know, basically we'd have to be fools to, to let him testify without some sort of immunity because he was also named as an unindicted co-conspirator. So they want to protect him. Um, that's going to be a tough one because there could be criminal charges coming for him on a federal level. So how do you work that out between the state and the federal? And does it cover him with federal? Is it only cover him with state? Anyway, um, another speaking of which <laughs> is that it was revealed on Friday that the district attorney is planning to offer plea deals to Powell and Kenneth Cheesebro. So Bernie Carrick might not even need to testify at all. We'll have to see. But um, like I said, they're going on trial if they don't take a plea deal in, a, in another few weeks. And Cheesebro just got some really bad news of his own, so he might want to consider the plea deal. Cheesebro was trying to argue that he can't be prosecuted because he only offered Trump advice for a brief period of time. There's like stipulations in the RICO charge that it has to be over an extended period of time. Um, he also says he was acting within his capacity as an attorney for Trump. He was trying through that reasoning to get his key evidence tossed, which was the memos, uh, which were the memos that he drafted for Trump describing his illegal fake electors plot. So he said, you know, that was attorney client privilege. That material can't be used. Well, the judge disagreed. He denied all all of cheese bros motions so he will be going to trial unless he and pal accept or unless at least he accepts the plea deal um also unless pal can get her case dismissed on wednesday of last week she filed a 20-page motion with the court she alleges prosecutorial misconduct on the part of the fulton county district attorney fonnie willis and her team Powell is therefore asking that the case against her be dismissed. Um, I will let you guys know what happens with that. But there's a few other Georgia co-defendants who were handed defeats last week in court as well. Rico defendants Jeffrey Clark, David Schaefer, Sean Still, and Kathy Latham were all denied their request 
to try to move their their cases to federal court. So of course they want to move it because they think there will be a more f- a favorable jury pool. Well, the judge ruled, Clark, no, you you were not acting in your capacity as a federal employee when you tried to help Trump overturn the election. So that was a no-go. And then the judge said that the other three were also not federal employees when they signed their fraudulent elector documents. The judge actually wrote in his opinion, quote, to find otherwise would convert all citizens who can lawfully vote into federal officers when they cast their ballot for U.S. House of Representatives. So he's saying anyone who casts a ballot then (laughs) for any elected official can say, you know, or or for a House representative, for a congressperson, oh, I was acting as a federal employee. I'm a federal employee. So we can expect appeals on this matter, but, you know, if Kathy Latham is now spooked by this Scott Hall plea deal, she could turn you know this whole case on its head i mean she could decide okay it's not worth it he took a plea deal he's going to tell what he knows about the breach of this voting equipment i need to get in on this i need to accept a plea deal too so this you know scott hall thing could be just the very first of the dominoes to fall because latham like i said she wasn't just involved in the breach of the voting equipment, she was also one of the fake electors. So she could potentially do some damage to several others in this case while they're busy appealing their rulings. Uh, Meanwhile, another one of the Georgia co-defendants is trying to separate his case from the others. Pastor Stephen Lee, he wants his case to be severed and tried separately from the rest of the defendants because his attorney says that the jurors will be prejudiced against him if he's tried along with all these other people. Now, Lee, you guys might recall, he was accused of participating in that pressure campaign against uh, election worker Ruby Freeman. What's not clear is if he's asking for a speedy trial or not. Um, If not, I doubt that the judge is going to grant his motion because, I mean, why? Why would the judge want to preside over the same case over and over and over again? Um, But we'll see what happens with that. There was also Rudy Giuliani news related to this case. Giuliani's attorney, David Wolf, has filed a notice with the court to be removed as counsel. This is one of his two attorneys that's representing him in this Georgia case. Um, There's no word as to why this attorney wants to be removed, but I mean, we can imagine, right? Because Giuliani is being sued by another attorney for failure to pay. So Um, there's also breaking news today about John Eastman. Eastman was still fighting against a court's ruling that the January 6th Select Committee had the right to review his emails. The court had ruled because they fell under the crime fraud exception, because there was a potential crime involved, they were not subject to attorney-client privilege protection, so they could review their e- his emails. Eastman took his appeals all the way to the Supreme Court, and they just today refused to take the case. So basically they said, nope, we're gonna let the lower court's ruling stand. And not only that, but Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas recused himself from that decision. Uh, So it seems like maybe some public pressure is getting to him. Last but not least, I have news on my fellow man, Mr. Mike Lindell. He has been making the rounds on right-wing shows. He's pleading for help and he is slamming Fox News. They so deserve this. Uh, Lindell told Steve Bannon that American Express dropped his line of credit from $1 million down to $100,000. Now, according to Lindell, this quote, cripples my pillow. No reason, no explanation, just dropped it down last Tuesday. Then Lindell tells Bannon that he's being audited by, audited by the IRS because he's doing so much winning. So check this out. And all of a sudden there's five IRS audits against my pillow in three different years. So this is all Stephen attack because uh, we're trying to secure our elections. They, and uh, ever since the event in August, everybody, this has been one attack after another. 
that we're getting so many wins out there. That's why the attacks have went up. And you know what? The more they attack, the more we're going to keep fighting and winning. And you can all help out by supporting my pillow. So five audits in three years. He's being sued for billions of dollars by Dominion and Smartmatic. He has he's had to sell off company assets. He's on the verge of financial ruin, but everyone's coming at him because of all the winning he's doing, you guys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then in an interview with Alex Jones on InfoWars, Lindell said that he's repeatedly had to assure vendors that his company isn't on the verge of collapse. And he told Jones, quote, Fox News made a dirty deal with Dominion and paid the $787 million. That was on a Tuesday. And Wednesday, they came out and said Michael Lindell lost $5 million because his evidence is no good. That's not true. That was a lie. We're not even in court till 2024. And then on Friday, Fox News fires Tucker Carlson. When that happened, I had vendors get very nervous and banks get very nervous about my pillow. They're calling me up and I'm saying, no, that doesn't even go into court till next year. So someone needs to stop him. Someone needs to step in and save this man from himself. How is it a lie that he owes $5 million because his election fraud evidence was bullshit? You guys all know, I've shared it with you. I've done a couple of segments on this. He held a contest at his ridiculous cyber symposium event and a data expert, a Trump supporting data expert proved that Mike Lindell had no valid evidence of fraud. Did he forget? How do you forget that you owe someone $5 million? I mean, he's conflating that $5 million ruling because remember the guy took him to court because Mike Lindell refuses to pay him. So he went to court, he got a judgment against Lindell for that $5 million because Mike Lindell said, prove Mike wrong. That was the whole thing. Prove Mike wrong, I'll pay you 5 million. He did, now he refuses to pay. So the guy got a ruling and he's conflating that ruling with the Dominion lawsuit? This guy is losing it. So anyway, I will keep you posted on all of this nuttiness. Thank you all so much for watching and listening. Please like this video, share it, become a subscriber if you haven't, donate if you possibly can. Love you all. I will talk with you soon. Take care.